Here it is in the flesh, the 2022 Honda Civic Si. This was all the buzz back in November. A bunch of media people, vloggers, bloggers, YouTubers were uh, invited out to Los Angeles to get their first look at this in person. I wasn't there. I wasn't invited. I'm not bitter. I'm not holding it against anybody. I'm just so happy to have it with me right now here at the Everyman Driver headquarters. So today, since I've got it, let's talk about it. This is a new benchmark for compact sports sedans. There, I said it, end of story. But wait, there's more. Since its introduction 35 years ago, the Civic Si has offered young driving enthusiasts an affordable, high-performance sports compact sedan. And now, you don't have to be young anymore. Are you ready? Ready to go under the hood? Let's take a look. Building upon the class-leading 11th generation Civic sedan, the 22 Civic Si continues that tradition with an unprecedented turbocharged high output VTEC 1.5 liter four cylinder, a standard rev matching six speed manual transmission friends, limited slip differential, sport tuned suspension, and available high performance summer tires. Its drive mode system features the following, normal, sport, and a new individual mode that allows you to customize your driving experience. Prepare yourself. Retuned with significantly broader power curves, the engine now delivers its 192 pound-feet of peak torque from 1800 to 5000 RPM, 300 RPM sooner than the previous generation. Performance is also extended at the top of the tack with more output maintained between its power peak of 200 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and its 6,500 RPM red line. A new lighter single mass flywheel gives the turbocharged engine a snappier throttle response for an even sportier experience according to Honda. SI's standard six-speed manual transmission has been re-engineered as well with greater shift feel and 10% shorter throws and for the first time Civic SI features a rev matching system from the Civic Type R. Here's something that's super impressive how wide open the driver's door opens to get inside and look at this this is one of the most comfortable sports seats that I've been in so nice and and uh, comfortable with the bolsterness. Is that a word, bolsterness? The seats are bolstered, so I've got great support around my waist, my ribs, so I'm ready to drive. As a true enthusiast vehicle, the SI exclusively is offered with three pedals and a stick shift. Now to maximize the SI's handling, ride quality, and overall driver enjoyment, Honda says its suspension has been completely retuned with stiffer springs, firmer dampers, strategically stiffer bushings, and thicker anti-roll bars. Updates to the steering system greatly improve steering feel. Sporty design cues unique to the Civic Si add a bit of attitude, while functional aerodynamic aids improve performance. A sporty honeycomb grille mesh echoes the intricate honeycomb trim inside the cabin. How's that for a turn of phrase? SI's new upper front bumper design is more aggressive and its rear bumper has been reshaped to reveal two large oval exhaust outlets. A gloss black spoiler in the rear mounted atop the trunk lid adds downforce to improve high speed stability. It also features gloss black exterior trim on the mirrors and window surrounds. I hope you can see this with the shadow and the sunlight. I'm 5'11", my wife thinks I'm 5'6", but I'm actually 5'11". This is my position as a driver up front. I'm not sure if you can see this in the shadows, but I've got enough room here between my knees and the back of the seat, and this is my position as a driver, so this is what it looks like. Somewhat comfortable, but what do I care? I'm not gonna be in the back seat. I'm behind the steering wheel or in the front passenger seat. Now inside, it features new SI exclusive body stabilizing sports seats with built-in head restraints and more prominent shoulder and thigh support. Racy red accents on its signature metal honeycomb dash trim match the contrasting stitching on the steering wheel, doors, console, shift boot, and leather wrapped aluminum shift knob. And yes, sport pedals are standard. The most technologically advanced Civic Si ever features a new 7-inch color LCD instrument display, a 9-inch HD color touchscreen, 
and wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto integration, and a new 12-speaker Bose Premium Style System is standard. It also benefits from the cutting-edge safety technology introduced with the 11th generation Civic line that includes next-generation driver and passenger front airbags and standard rear seat side impact airbags. In addition, an expanded Honda Sensing suite of driver assistive and safety technology that adds new features such as traffic sign recognition and a driver attention monitor comes with this SI. There's also a rear seat reminder and rear seat belt reminder standard across the entire lineup. All Civic models, including SI, feature an advanced compatibility engineering body structure that is enhanced for improved capability with larger vehicles. Your price point and fuel economy numbers are as followed. 27.3 is the MSRP. You have to add $1,000 for destination, so it comes out to 28,315. Fuel economy, 27 city, 37 highway for a mixed driving number of 31. If you want summer tires, add 200 bucks. So what do you think? Is it everything that has been advertised to be in your opinion? Are you willing to give it a test drive and find out for yourself? I certainly encourage it. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Adios. What is wrong with the Honda Accord? Sales in the US have plummeted over the last seven to eight years. It peaked in 2014, 388,000 Honda Accords were sold in the US. Since then, it has dropped to 355, 345, 322, 291, 267. 199,000 in 2020. It bounced back by 3,000 more cars sold in 2021. Why aren't more Americans buying Honda Accords like they used to? <laughs> this modern midsize sedan is a joy to drive. It's got plenty of passenger and cargo space. Very fuel efficient, especially with the available hybrid, but some people will complain it lacks all wheel drive. Maybe that's why consumers are turning to other vehicles or maybe SUVs. Has a finicky push button gear selector. Maybe that's it. It has a beginning MSRP right around $27,000, $28,000. In soccer terms, it scores a hat trick. Not just a comfortable family hauler. It's also highly entertaining behind the wheel, in my opinion. It has elegant style inside and out and deserves a place on the list of anyone's shopping list for a mid-size sedan. Rivals include the Mazda 6, Toyota Camry, which normally is the go-to versus the Honda Accord. There's also the Kia K5 and Hyundai Sonata offering strong competition. The 2022 model had no significant changes and there were some minor refreshing done last year. So it's basically the same vehicle it has been for the last couple of years. And maybe that is why the numbers have been fairly flat since 2020. And there are no major changes expected for 2023. So maybe these numbers will continue to fall. This is all very surprising to me because there are plenty of options to choose from in terms of trim levels and engines. You've got the LX, Sport, Sport SE, EXL, Sport 2.0 Turbo, Touring trim levels. There's also a hybrid which comes in the base, Sport EXL and Touring form as well. The Sport's pretty popular, but the SE is probably the best value. It has a standard 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, good for 192 horses, 192 pound-feet of torque, paired with a CVT, which is always a sticking point for a lot of people out there. Output for this engine is considered adequate, and the CVT is better than most, but the larger 2-liter turbo with 252 horses and 273 pound-feet of torque is worthy of consideration for performance-minded drivers, and maybe that's you. And the 10-speed automatic transmission makes the most of the turbo's engine's substantial power. On the other hand, the hybrid is rated at 212 horses, 232 pound-feet of torque, figures that top the output of the competing Camry hybrid and Sonata hybrid, so that's something to consider. But the argument is the Accord remains exclusively front-wheel drive, even as its rivals, the Legacy from Subaru, the Altima from Nissan, Camry, and Kia K5 all offer all-wheel drive for additional traction in cold weather climates. Considering how roomy the trunk is at 16.7 cubic feet of volume, roomiest in its class, you'd think that it'd be a better seller. The fast sloping roof line means the rear seat passengers must duck their heads while getting in. But once inside, you've got a lot of leg room and knee room as well as head clearance once you're inside. 
In the front cabin, you've got a broad but low dashboard. Small storage spaces are all over the place and everyone's phone can be charged now that Honda includes two front and rear USB ports. And if you went with the EX, EXL, Sport 2.0 Turbo and Touring trim levels, you get wireless charging. One thing that may stand out to potential shoppers like yourself is no real shifter. Instead, you've got buttons and switches rather than a simple gear lever. All 2022 cores do come with an 8-inch central touchscreen that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which seems like everyone does these days, but navigation and a Wi-Fi hotspot are exclusive only to the Touring. Whereas some recent Honda infotainment systems have not been so user-friendly, the Accord system is simple. Its physical buttons flank the screen to take you directly to the main functions. Large knobs for volume and tuning are also very welcome. The only thing missing is a split-screen capability for the home screen. Honda is known for safety. It has an overall five-star rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety has not tested the 2022. However, it did name the 2021 model a top safety pick plus its highest rating. So since there are no major changes for 2022, you can assume the same. Over the last 10 years, Honda Accord sales in Canada peaked at 17,000 in 2013 and then remained pretty flat between 2015 and 2018 at around 13,000 cars and change and then went down to 11,000, 7,000 and last year 6,400 cars in Canada. So numbers there are also on the decline. When I examine numbers of Camrys sold in the US, looks like 2007 was one of the best years over the last 10 years of 472,000. It stayed around the 400 to 300,000 car mark per year and then kind of had a nice little bounce back last year with 313,000 compared to the 294,000 in 2020. So Camry is actually on the rise despite a few ups and downs over the last five years. A similar trend in Canada for the Camry, where they had a good year in 2013, 18,245 cars. Then it dropped down to 15, 14, and 13,000 in 2019. Then they had a drop again in 2020, like a lot of people did with the pandemic really in full effect. Nice little bounce back in 2021 in Canada for Camry at around 12,000 cars sold. As we wrap this up, I guess a brief history lesson to put all this in perspective. The Accord came out in 1976. The Camry came out six years later. Of course, the Honda Accord has sold more because of the, the head start, but both are solid, reliable sedans. They had that major redesign or full redesign in 2018, both of them. They offer stellar safety ratings and fuel economy. At one point, both have reigned as the best-selling models in their respective brands, even though Sedan sales are lagging in general as crossovers and SUVs become more and more popular. I know Camry continues to be one of the top, if not the most popular Toyota among its lineup. And even though CRV is more popular than the Accord, it's still a very viable and uh, worthwhile product for Honda. It's really hard to put a finger on why the Accord sales have dropped, although Many of the manufacturers and brands have seen a drop since the pandemic hit and with the chip shortage and such, uh, things will continue to be stagnant or maybe even uh, dropping more so in the coming years. Who knows, it's all up in the air. Ultimately, whatever you choose, whether it's a Cord or Camry, both are solid vehicles and I'm sure you'll be happy with your choice no matter which one you choose. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on this topic. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks for watching. Adios. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.